What is going on, everybody? John Middlecoff, 3 and Out Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to that podcast wherever you may listen. Check out the YouTube page. Subscribe to the Volumes YouTube page. Leave a comment. Leave a comment. Interact. Like that. Like this video. Share it with your friends. As well as AMP. Listen live on AMP, where we are all the time, every day of the week, all the volume shows, live and in charge. Download the AMP app from your smartphone. A lot going on right now. Carson Wentz cut. Anthony Richardson flying up the boards. The Bears open for business. And uh, some potential movement on some star players at the NFL Combine. But before we dive into that, I got to tell you about my friends at Game Time. If you're listening to this or watching this on Tuesday, I'm currently at the Dodger game. And I am there because of my friends at Game Time. And if you or your significant other or your son or your best friend want to go to an event, whether it's a concert, comedy show, a game, Spring training, a regular season baseball game, March Madness, a golf tournament, live golf. Might check that out in a couple weeks. Use my friends at Game Time, fastest growing ticket app in America. Go to your smartphone, download the app. And when you do, first time users, type in the promo code John, that's J O H N, that's just my name, and get $20 off tickets to any event. Get outside, leave your house, go do something. And when you do it, do it on me. Get a discount. J O H N, $20 off. Do it now. I'm at the Dodger game, probably booing them because I don't even like the Dodgers. I'm a Giants fan, but the Dodgers are good. The Giants aren't, so might as well go enjoy a good spring training game. And you should too. Game time, download it, go see an event. Promo code John. Let's dive into quarterbacks because that's just going to be a hot topic, right? The draft, all these free agent quarterback movement, who's going to go where, who's going to get traded where. We had news today. Carson Wentz was released from the Washington Commanders. And, you know, sometimes on paper, things look really good, right? And when it comes to athletes or quarterbacks, big, strong, big arm, accurate, productive, and things just don't work. And for whatever reason, I can't exactly put my finger on it. Carson Wentz just isn't that good. And whether it all started being derailed because mentally he couldn't handle some adversity right when he got injured and tore his ACL and Nick Foles ended up winning the Super Bowl it's never been the same and let's face it it's all been downhill since the problem was for Philly and then Indy and now Washington is that he had got the extension when that happened so he was making big money and when you make big money you just get judged differently like if you're listening to this and you're 25 years old, new at a company, and you're making 75 grand, you've got to fly under the radar. If you're making 60 grand, 80 grand, if you're listening to this and you're 40 years old and you make 600 grand at your company, like you kind of got to get it done. Because if you don't and things turn, I, I saw a quote from Mark Zuckerberg, not a big Facebook guy or meta, I actually can't even sign into my account. But obviously their stock plummeted over the last six months, as a lot of people in tech did, and they had a lot of layoffs at their company. And one thing Zuckerberg, I saw a quote, and I thought it was like, God, that makes a lot of sense. We need to get away from managers managing other people. Basically, managers managing other managers. And what he's basically saying is, we got guys making 700 grand, managing people making 350 grand. That's a problem. And those were the type of people that just got laid off, right? The reason these people are going to get cut throughout the NFL is because they make a lot of money. Not because a lot of them can't play, but the moment you start making a lot of money and your play diminishes a little bit, I got to get rid of you because we're in a salary cap league and I got to build the puzzle that is my roster. Now, Carson Wentz is a guy who was making, because quarterbacks, once they get extensions, even if they happen three, four, five years ago, still make more money per year than every other position in the league. Carson Wentz making $30, $35 million dollars is more money than the historic amount of cash that got handed out last year to guys like Tyree Kill and Devontae Adams. So once you play at an average level, you're not. it's not going to work. It's just simply not going to work. Because two years ago, Carson Wentz, Google his stats, weren't that bad in Indianapolis. But what was the problem? Last two weeks, he played like shit against the Raiders and the Jags, and they missed the playoffs. This year, I watched the Commanders a decent amount this season. I thought they were pretty good. I remember talking to my buddies in Philly. I'm like, their team's pretty talented. And that was before they beat the Eagles. Like, they got good players on that team. They have some flaws, but they they definitely have a talented roster. And you can't make the playoffs with this guy as your starting quarterback. And once I start paying you 
at that rate, you're going to be a red flag. You're going to be a problem for my team. So then we factor in, you know, there's like this unspoken thing with him. People don't really like him, like in the building, not like a bad guy. People, you know, it's just, it's hard to quite quantify, but he's not well-liked for whatever reason. And that, that's another thing. The standard at quarterback is really fucking high. Because you know all the good players in the league at that position? Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts are fucking loved in their building. Loved. I'm not talking by the coaches or the GM. I'm talking by the other players. Everyone really, really likes them. Forever. Tom Brady, greatest teammate of all time. That matters. And that's something as we dive into these draft prospects, who you are as a guy impacts as much as who you are as a player, unless you're an elite player. Like once you get to be as good as Rodgers, you can do some quirky things, whatever. I'm rattling off MVPs and 13, 14 wins. When we start going under 500 or missing the playoffs, your quirkiness on top of your salary don't quite add up. And that's why Carson Wentz now feels destined to be a backup. And to me, the best thing Carson Wentz can do now is to take like a year, make like a million bucks, and go be Mahomes, Josh Allen, Matt Stafford, a guy like that's backup with a real head coach. And I would specifically lean offense. Andy Reid, Sean McVay, like that's where I'd be interested. I'll play for nothing, I'll be a backup, and I'll just resurrect my reputation. And maybe I'm destined to be a backup. But I think as much as his play is a question mark, I think his reputation's in tatters. I, I don't think people respect him around the league. From, from a front office standpoint, and what a fall from grace. I mean, it wasn't that long ago where it looked like the guy was going to be the MVP. And then hurts his knee and the rest is history. And now Nick Foles has a statue, and he doesn't, and Carson Wentz is currently looking for work. And on the other flip side, and this goes to Carson in the draft, especially high in the draft, you're taking calculated risks, right? There is no bigger risk you can take than the investment of trading up or selecting a quarterback really, really high, right? It's one thing to take a position player. It doesn't work, whatever. You can pivot. You got other, like if I miss on a wide receiver in the top five or an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman, I got other guys playing that position. But when I miss on Mitch Trubisky, on Carson Wentz, you know, on potentially Trey Lance or Zach Wilson, like that's a major problem. Partly because I'm drafting you to potentially be my quarterback for the next decade and a half. You're going to be the reason that my coaches, my general managers get extensions, why my team consistently goes to the playoffs. You change the trajectory of my franchise. But it's a calculated risk because I'm basing everything off college, which whether you're really productive in college doesn't mean you're going to be productive in the NFL. And whether you weren't productive in college does not mean you're not going to be productive in the NFL, i.e. Josh Allen. So that there's no guarantee no matter any of the information that we have. And that's just from on the field. Now, off the field, I think we know that pretty consistently, high-level, high-character, hard-working football junkies kill it in the NFL at quarterback. It's got to be a way of life. It's not what you do for work. It's what you do. It's your, it is your life. It, it, it defines you. From a time standpoint, during for six months of the year, you work coaches' hours, 90-plus hours a week, studying, preparing. On time, this you spend with your teammates, you know, cultivating and, you know, continuing to grow relationships as human beings, let alone as players. So this buzz on Anthony Richardson is really starting to grow. From a gambling standpoint, he was a huge, huge flyer to be the number one pick. And now I heard someone say he's five to one, five to one to be the number one overall pick. Now, whether he's the number one overall pick or not, I don't know. But it's pretty clear the buzz is growing that there's a very good chance that a guy like this is going to be the number one, or excuse me, a top five pick in the draft, right? He's 6'4", he can run, he's got a huge arm. And his highs, like when you watch that game against Utah the opening weekend, he looks fucking incredible. Like when he's on, it looked awesome. But he's also a 54% career passer who has been basically a one-year starter and thrown 24 career touchdowns. Now, as we've seen with Josh Allen, like statistics in college don't necessarily equate. The number one thing that is ultimately going to define this guy is, you know, mechanically, I, I'm not a quarterback coach. So there might be things that a quarterback coach sees that he can work on, that he thinks might be an improvable potential. 
But the reason this guy is going to sink or swim in the NFL is going to be the person. So starting this week, if I'm the Texans, if I'm the Bears, if I'm the Colts, if I'm the Raiders, whoever, all these teams that are drafting really high that are going to be interested in this guy, I got to get to know the person. How much he loves football, how hard he works, his football intellect, how well he takes football information and then can execute it on the field. And because I don't know just because he wasn't that good in college that he won't be good in the NFL. Just like we've seen guys be very, very good in college and not be good in the NFL. So there is, this is not an exact science. We we do not know for sure on any of these things. And this notion, like w- the way Warren Buffett invests slow, steady is pretty boring. Now it works over time. That's why, you know, he's the most successful investor of all time. But like, there's a reason that once you gave everyone a little cash, they started investing in crypto and NFTs. Why? You're all trying to hit strike oil, right? Hit the lottery. That was everyone's mindset. I want to turn $1,000 into 50 k And Warren Buffett probably tell you, just turn that $1,000 into $2,000 and go from there. But you can't do that in the draft because just because you take the safe player, there's no guarantee that he's going to be good. Every single year we go, this guy's got a high floor, and then the guy sucks in the NFL, right? And just because you have a high ceiling doesn't mean you're ever going to hit it, like Anthony Richardson. But if it does hit, I get a star quarterback. And then I do strike oil or I do hit the lottery. I was the guy that turned $5,000 into crypto into $50 million. Changes my life. So I understand the rise on this guy because the physical characteristics, just go to YouTube, watch two minute highlight. It's freakish. But I don't know. And I haven't done any research yet in terms of texting my friends in the league, like what his character stuff is. That ultimately will determine his success or failure. But I do get why. This guy, when the dust settles, is going to go a lot higher than you know his college tape would tell you he should go. Uh, the Bears. It was reported on Monday morning by Adam Schefter that the Bears are now open for business. Of course they are. They're terrible. They should be, when I say open for business, on the number one overall pick. Here's what I know the Chicago Bears. And I don't know Ryan Poles. He's listening to everything and anything. You want to trade for the number one pick? What can I get? You want to trade for Justin Fields? What are you willing to give me? There is not a phone call right now that not only is he not picking up, that he's actively discussing. Like there are phone calls around the NFL that I hang up immediately. You call Andy Reid, ask about Patrick Mahomes or Travis Kelsey. He hangs up. Call Kyle Shanahan, ask about Nick Bosa and Fred Warner. He hangs up. Right. But when I call the Chicago Bears, the worst team in the NFL last year <laughs> that has a million holes. And listen, Ryan Poles would like a redo on something. That second round pick that he traded for Chase Claypool is the 32nd pick in the draft. I think he'd like to have that pick back. So the notion that trading down and rolling with Fields, well, yeah. Would I rather keep Fields if somehow I could trade back five or six spots and get? two extra number ones on top of my trade back and maybe a third round pick. Of course I have to entertain that. No different that, well, will someone give me a first round pick for Justin Fields? And do I love Bryce Young or CJ Stroud or one of these guys? So I think you're balancing it all. There is not a story that's going to come out about the bears that I don't think is believable because everything should be believable. They stink right now. Their roster is awful. All they have, is potential to make big moves this offseason. And to me, whether that's Justin Fields, whether that's trading back, everything is on the table. Now, if Bryce Young was six foot three and 215 pounds, to me, it'd be a no brainer. You would trade Justin Fields for whatever, because there's a chance part of trading Justin Fields, are they getting a first round pick for the guy? Probably not. So, do they want to trade Justin Fields for like a second and a third round pick? Now, they were not the ones that made the trade to acquire them, which cost them multiple first-round picks. But, like, yeah, ideally, you don't want to do that. But if I could trade him for two twos, and I think Bryce Young is a can't-miss guy, then I do it in a heartbeat. Now, if the best offer I have on the table is a third-round pick for Justin Fields, and I can trade back and acquire a bunch of picks and then just figure it out as we go with a lot of ammo, then i probably do that. But this notion that the Bears... Like, oh, see, Schefter tweeted, 
They're open for business. They're keeping Justin Fields. Yeah, they're open for everything. And they would not be doing their job if they didn't fall into that category. No different than the big story going around right now on Jalen Ramsey, that the Rams might trade Jalen Ramsey. You're going to see this a lot. When I worked in the office and I was a pro scout, we had this sheet all basically starting in like November, December of guys on teams that were cap casualties. Basically meant good players on every team that were probably going to lose their job, not because they couldn't play, but because maybe their play outweighed their salary or their team was up against a cap situation where that was really the only option. If I cut you, I can save $15 million. I can save $20 million. So a lot of guys get released over the next several weeks who can play in the NFL. And most of these teams have had their pro personnel department grade these players because they know those guys are potentially going to be available. Now, the first thing you want to do before I cut a player is I want to trade them, right? Ideally, the Raiders would have loved to trade Derek Carr. The reason they cut Derek Carr was because he had no trade clause, right? <laughs> but ideally, they would have loved to trade him for whatever to get value. So Jalen Ramsey is a good example. Now, he's on the high end, but there are a ton of players. Like last year, James Bradbury got cut. He didn't get cut because he can't play. He got cut because not a scheme fit. And this happens with a lot of new regimes. I cut players that aren't a scheme fit and make too much money. And they become available and they immediately sign good, healthy contracts on other teams. So you're going to see a lot of rumors over the next six, seven days coming out of the combine of players on the trading block. And a lot, this is a business. A lot of that revolves around the money. Now the Rams are in a unique position. One, they invested so much money into like four or five players and they don't have any picks. So really, what are they going to do? Trade Aaron Donald? Trade Matt Stafford or Cooper Cup? Of course not. The only guy who you could possibly trade and get value for is Jalen Ramsey. But here's the problem. I was reading the other day that Jalen Ramsey, he's going to want a new contract. So if I'm a team, and I don't think Jalen Ramsey played that well last year. He's already been traded once for two ones. What's his market now? When you factor in, like, does he need a new deal? Do I have to give him 50 plus million dollars in guaranteed? Now he's only 28 years old. But am I trading, if I'm the Chiefs, would I trade pick 31 for Jalen Ramsey and then give him money? Well, I'm paying a lot of other people too. I just invested a lot in these young corners who played pretty well and I won the Super Bowl with them. So probably not, right? Now, would Jalen Ramsey be an immediate starter on my team? Of course. But do I want to allocate money? Like, do I need to extend Chris Jones again? Do I need to go buy other players? Do I need to invest, continue to invest in my offensive line? It becomes complicated, right? The money, it's not just about the picks, it's about the money. And you can always finagle your cap, right? You can turn uh, base salary into signing bonuses and into incentive bonuses. You can do a lot of things. The, the cap is very easy to manipulate. But one thing you can't do is like when guys have enormous sums of money coming, if I know, because a lot of times these GMs or the cap guys will go to the agent and go, Will you take a pay cut? You're scheduled to make $16 million next year. We want to keep you, but we got to have you on the books for nine, right? And they go, well, if I hit the open market, I might not get 16, but I'll get a multi-year deal at, you know, 28 and get $20 million guaranteed and make $14 million a year. That's better than taking the pay cut. So that has been going on for the last week, and it really comes to a head this week. When all the agents are talking with the GMs who then kind of find out the rate for their guy from maybe their given team, they start going to other teams. They go, hey, what would you pay my guy? And that's why, like, there are no rules. The, the tampering rules, like, everyone's talking about everything as they should, you know? So you're going to see some rumors about trades. Like, Jalen Ramsey, that makes sense. The Rams don't have any assets. The only way they can free some space and get some picks is Jalen Ramsey because they're not trading the other guys. But you're going to see names of, you know, whoever your team is. Wait, they're, they're shopping this guy? Well, yeah, they're just doing it because they need to either gain some cap room or they're not willing to pay him what he's on the books. And he's not going to take a pay cut because he knows through his agent that he's worth more on the open market. So it's it's a fascinating time kind of of, uh, uh, of give and take and kind of betting on the rumors because you never truly know until you hit the market, right? Derek Carr bet. 
I could get more money than $40 million. Well, he's about to find out. And he's kind of getting a gauge right now as he's meeting with all these teams. But eventually, when the contract, the rubber's going to meet the road, right? Like, what is Jimmy Garoppolo worth? Well, we're going to find out in a couple weeks, right? I'd say about 18, but if someone gives him 30, I'm not going to be shocked, though. I will call that a dumb deal.